My name's Conrad Nelson. I'm the director of The Winter's Tale, a Northern Broadsides production. I'm also in it, and I've written some of the music. <gasps> wow. <laughs> really comprehensive job. Yeah. Charlie Goods, why have you chosen The Winter's Tale? Well, we've not done it uh, as a company before, and um, I thought it was a good play. It got mentioned to me a few years ago by one of the guys who's in the cast at the moment, Andy Cryer. He said, I think The Winter's Tale would be a good one for you. It's got, it's got the drama, it's got the pathos, it's got the music, it's got the comedy. All those elements that we do, I think, pretty well. Hopefully we do them well. Um, and, yeah, you get, you get both parts in this play. The first half is sort of veers towards the tragedy and the pathos of a jealous king and, and everything. But then the second half sort of lifts out into the light and you get this sheep shearing festival, wherever may that, that may be. Uh, and the music and the dance and the sort of comedy and then the sort of resolve, which is a, a sort of beautiful, ma magical realism sort of end. So it's got, it's got everything really. And I think that's good for a broadside's um, uh, performance. I think it fits our brief well. Is it a problem play? I think it's become much more uh, popular. I don't know where the problem play title comes from. Maybe, maybe it's because of the time thing. Maybe it's because it feels at times those two worlds are colliding. But that's the nature of it. Um, you, you have the first part of the play, a child gets born, gets left. We follow the child's journey back to becoming queen. So it, in some way it is holistic and com in lots of ways complete. And her birth brings brings about the sort of reconciliation. So it, it's, it, it sort of makes sense to me. I mean, it's, it's the interesting thing about the writing, of course, is that it feels quite modern. Mm. Uh, what I mean by that is that if, if he had a period of writing in iambic, you know, and even verse form all the time, that later, now, as he gets to be an older man, he's probably, I'm guessing, throws the rule book out and says, you know what, we'll have something a little bit more fractious here, or we'll write it, we'll forget about that structure. We've moved on, we're sort of so much bolder, and we're, we're being a bit more creative with the writing style. And it's interesting that the, amb the even iambic thing, the thing that makes you feel most settled, comes with the Perdita character. So when she's in the summer, when we've had all this fractious, this jealousy, the thing breaking down, the, one, the, 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 new, the, the, new, uh, the newborn uh, child who speaks it takes this part of this May Queen, well not May Queen, but Festival Queen. She speaks in iambic and we all go, oh, it's settled again. Mm -hmm. And it suddenly brings this sort of resolve, to my mind anyway, and we go, oh yeah, it's going to be all right.